it would be good if we just put the the straw man to bed that we've that we've mentioned already. Seti likes to paint us as holding a central belief that there are simply no conspiracies in the world. But we've often talked about real conspiracies, and there are others that I think we, we're also, you know, clear about as well. So, for example, I'll, I'll lead us off. Uh, we talked about Tuskegee on right. the podcast a couple times. And for anyone who's not familiar, this was an awful 40-year chapter in medicine from 1932 to 1972, in which researchers offered free medical care to about 600 poor black sharecroppers in Alabama, while actually just studying them to track the progress of their untreated syphilis. They administered placebos and treatments they already knew to be ineffective. 128 people died, and many of the men's wives and children were infected as, as well as a result of this. Completely horrific, malevolent, racist, and absolutely shameful conspiracy, and something that we've covered on the podcast. So yeah. that's just one. I mean, the other one that I'll bring up is relevant. We haven't talked about it before, but it's relevant in terms of some of what we'll get into today, which is the Valerie Plame affair. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, anyone who doesn't know about this, it's, it was a fascinating episode. In, in 2003, episode in our history, I mean, the Bush administration sent a former diplomat named Joe Wilson to Niger to investigate claims that Iraq had purchased, uh, had arranged to purchase yellow cake uranium to make nuclear weapons. Wilson later wrote in an op-ed for the New York Times saying he'd found no evidence that the claims had any merit at all. And this slowed down the Bush and Cheney agenda of trying to legitimize invading Iraq by claiming that Saddam was building weapons of mass destruction. And it just so happened that Joe Wilson had a wife named Valerie Plame, who was a CIA operative undercover agent. So right. in, in retaliation, Dick Cheney's aide, Scooter Libby, so the story goes, the story they ended up telling later, leaked her identity to syndicated columnist Robert Novak, who then casually outed her in an article about Wilson as a kind of aside, just mentioning her wife, who happens to be a CIA agent. And this directly put her life at risk. It blew her cover as an agent. It effectively ended her career. And it was shown to have been malevolently uh, planted in that way to punish him for not helping with their conspiratorial agenda. I'm comfortable adding here, too, that the neocon core of the Bush administration opportunistically seized upon 9-11 as a pretext to go into Iraq and gain control of the $12 trillion worth of oil there and established lucrative contracts for Halliburton, which was the company Cheney had been CEO of until 2000. They also lied about Hussein's ties to Al-Qaeda to get into the war, try and blame 9-11 on him. And in the end, Scooter Libby took the fall, but he had a sentence commuted very conveniently by Bush and was later pardoned in full by Trump. So do I sound like a conspiracy theorist? Well, kind of, but all of this stuff is supported by solid evidence and we know that it actually happened. We've also spoken about the fact that there is obviously has been an ongoing conspiracy to cover up the extent of Jeffrey Epstein's sex trafficking network. Uh, we don't know the extent of it. It's going to take a lot of investigative journalism, a lot of prying into what levels of law enforcement and, uh, you know, state uh, level, um, you know, attorneys general's offices, I think in Florida have uh, worked against trying to uncover that material. Um, and it's because, and we've brought up that case uh, over and over again, because the lack of resolution, the suppression of information that's probably going on, uh, the, the questions surrounding Jeffrey Epstein's death, all of these are very, very difficult matters to digest, to process culturally, uh, to be able to understand. And uh, QAnon provides a lot of answers uh, very quickly. It fills in the gaps. Um, Save the Children flies in and uh, takes over the the turn, turns what's a very very difficult set of data points into a resolvable or an understandable story. We've also brought up uh, the reality of the conspiracy of MK Ultra and its impact upon thousands of people in both Canada and the United States, but also abroad uh, in the CIA's attempt to try to figure out how to um, uh, you know administer uh, brainwashing techniques. Um, ultimately failing. But yeah, I mean, these things happen and they have to be dug into and it's very difficult for them to be understood. And they are the reason that conspiracy theories take off uh, to fill in the gaps. Speaking of MKUltra, I mean, one that I've butted up against for 
10 months of this podcast is we cover vaccines a lot and then people will claim that we're big pharma shills. But one thing I've repeatedly brought up is the conspiracy of forces that led to the antidepressant boom which involved the government working with the psychiatry and the pharmaceutical industry. And I document all of that in my last book. It's something I'm very passionate about because uh, being a fan of where psychedelic therapy is potentially heading. And you can look at the documents of the different ways that basically psychology and pharmacology strong-armed insurance agencies in the government to downplay the efficacy of talk therapy and psychotherapy and then to get people on a pill they have to consume every day. And the one thing about this too that I'll I'll point out as we lead into this podcast we're going to discuss and dissect is that something like what I just brought up is heavily footnoted with reputable sources that mm-hmm. have done done the research. And when I look at the podcast and all of the claims that were made that we're going to get into and listen to some clips of, there's no footnotes in Jay's liner notes. There, like he repeatedly says, I've looked at both sides and never states any of his resources of where he's looking. And that that to me is at least if you're going to if you're going to touch upon things that are potentially conspiratorial in nature, bring the receipts and show it. Don't just say, I've looked at things. That that is, means absolutely nothing. That's why we offer extensive show notes in our podcast every week so that people who actually want to see where we're getting information can go and look for it. Yeah. And, and I, the thing I want to add here too, because, you know, we just each laid out conspiracies that we, that we accept and that we know actually happened. Uh, the mistake that people who fall down the conspiracy rabbit hole make is they come across something like this, that, that has been shown to be the case or that looks suspicious enough and then tend to generalize, generalize outwards. So everything you just said about that, uh, antidepressant, uh, kind of, you know, underhandedness, Derek, easily then becomes, well, look at what they did with antidepressants. So it wouldn't surprise me if, and that's the mistake. You can't generalize from the, from the specifics. Uh, you, you need, you need receipts every 